For night got rid of building because it was getting stale Overwatch needed a sequel since it was about to fail You mix them both together what you get is Realm Royale And that game is dead now I need something like Warzone but with some more spice Something like PUBG but the graphics look nice Emphasize the teamwork so I can play with friends Mix a bit of everything you get Apex Legends Apex Legends, I'm in heaven Ooh. You had eight different legends in the beginning No, 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 no Apex Legends, I'm in heaven Apex Legends Three years later, don't want it to This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Do you ever just go to a website and out of nowhere, oh my God, it's just super bright. There's no dark mode feature on it. And on top of that, there's barely any customization features like boring. Well, Opera GX fixes that because you can customize your entire web browser experience. You can make it whatever color you want, whatever style you want, make it have its own little noises and everything. It's super easy, quick and intuitive. But what about the light? Boom. Dark mode. But you may be thinking, Macro, all of my passwords and everything that's important to me is already on my Chrome. It's really easy. You can just click import, boom, all your saved passwords and all Google Chrome extensions are compatible with Opera GX too. So pretty nice. And another big issue I have with Chrome is that it takes up so much CPU and RAM power. Kind of a weird amount considering I'm just watching cat videos. Opera GX has the GX control, which is a panel that allows for you to control how much the browser will use the CPU and RAM. And now you you, my noobs out there, can try out this really dope feature in the GX corner, boom, where you'll be able to see all of the 12 latest uploads on my channel. So you'll have no excuse for missing my videos, mom. And it has a built-in VPN, all for free. <laughs> Download now by clicking the link in the description down below. Thank you so much to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. And now, transition. Apex Legends has had a wild journey. As the spiritual successor to Titanfall 2, Apex's gameplay, aesthetic, and world got players hooked for all these years. Launching kind of out of nowhere, this battle royale started with very little content at launch, but over time, it has shown how well a live service game can work. Apex initially only had one map, 8 legends, and 18 guns. Now, there's 4 whole maps, 20 legends, and a whopping 28 guns. Apex had only one default mode, the trio's battle royale playlist, now it has a decent variety of options to play the game. A lot has changed, and I think that Apex Legends deserves a chance to be re-reviewed by me, after so much content has been added, because this is a completely different game than what I was playing three years ago. So unlike most videos where I would kind of over explain everything, this video is made to highlight all the biggest changes in Apex and what I think about them, and then ultimately reviewing the game as a whole. So let's start with... King's Canyon was the only map on day one, and while it's still here, it's been destroyed and rebuilt multiple times, in some cases for the better, and in other cases for the worse. Overall, the current King's Canyon is a vast improvement on the original, with some of my favorite POIs being here like Crash Site and Crypto Satellite Room. However, King's Canyon isn't my favorite map because we got some new ones. By Season 3, we received our second map, World's Edge. Undeniably a great map, especially for ranked, and such a welcome addition and nice change of pace upon its release. And by Season 7, we got Olympus, my favorite map, and arguably the most beautiful map. With it, we got the introduction of Trident Vehicles, which have been fun and at times frustrating, and some of the best POIs ever made. And by Season 11, we got our fourth map, Stormpoint. Its reception has been mixed by the community, as it is very large, which slowed down the game tremendously. But with so many unique additions like cannons and PvE enemies, it definitely has a bold design, to say the least. All four of these maps have received changes here and there throughout multiple seasons to create variety and at times even fix gameplay issues with the map. The rate at which maps have been introduced and changed has been very solid. Very few seasons have felt dull and new areas made on older maps have been met with very positive reception from the community, for the most part. The only downside is that with four maps, getting to play your favorite map can be kind of hard to do sometimes because it takes like an hour and a half for that map to come back. Not the best system and hopefully that gets improved in the future, especially if we get a fifth map. 
the weapon pool drastically increased, with most weapons fitting right in. Every now and then, a weapon will come in too strong like the charge rifle or the rampage, but the devs have done a good job to balance the weapons as best as they could. New hop-ups were added and some hop-ups were removed over time. Care package weapons have been cycled in and out of the package every season, with the sole exception being the Kraber, as of recording at least. The Mozambique went from meme to meh, and the R31 is still the best. So really, has Apex's weapon pool really changed that much? There's a couple more modes. Duos has been added, but there's still no solos. There's a ranked mode that feels like it's always been here, but surprisingly, it wasn't here for a while. And Apex has added a non-Battle Royale mode, Arenas. There's been limited time modes that are cycled in and out, with Control being the mode that players eagerly want to be added the most, including myself. But otherwise, the rate that we got these new modes has been a bit slow. The way the game plays has changed a lot as well. Some Golden Items effects have completely changed, and some gold items just straight up disappeared. Appeared. I'll never forget you, Gold Barrel Stabilizer. Survival items have been added like heat shields and mobile respawn beacons to make the game easier to, well, survive. You spawn with shields now, and they evolve by getting damage, aka Evo shields, which is something that was implemented in Season 6, but I can't even imagine playing this game without it. We used to play a version of this game where the only way you found purple armor is by RNG. Think about that. I mean, it's still an EA game. The cosmetics haven't changed in price value really, but the skins have arguably gotten better, but that's a matter of opinion. Heirlooms are still ridiculously overpriced, and Mythic skins are just like, come on. What's that about? On the bright side, sprays, skydive emotes, and emotes have been a welcome addition to the cosmetic pool. But I wouldn't expect any prices to be getting cheaper anytime soon. But thankfully, you don't need to buy anything to have a good time on this game still. Well, that is if you own all the legends already. 20 Legends is a lot. Most of them are very well designed and add a lot to the lore and story. But from a gameplay and balance perspective, some legends have remained dominant like Wraith or became dominant due to reworks and changes like Gibby. The eight original legends have all received changes, but their core kits have remained essentially the same. But the biggest changes were given to Lifeline and Mirage. Lifeline's drone can revive without her, but she can no longer fast heal. Mirage no longer goes invisible, but his clones actually move and copy his movement he also becomes invisible when he revives, but he's still the same because he still sucks. There, you happy? That's Mirage 2.0 for all the fans who've been begging. I swear if he gets reworked again in season 13, I'm gonna scream. I've made videos on all the 12 legends that have been released since, so if you really want to learn more about them, check out those videos. All the 12 new legends that have been added since also received some big changes here and there, but I will quickly go over some of the biggest changes that they've received since they've launched. Crypto can throw his drone now without having to go inside the drone, fuse his ultimate scan now, Loba can steal all ammo for free, Octane can double jump and launch horizontally off his jump pad which is really loud now, Rampart can walk around with Sheila, Seer is just bad now, and Revenant can climb basically forever, also his death totem gives you half health. I know there are a ton of other changes, but those are just the ones that are huge, like change the way this character plays type huge. I gotta give the devs mad props because balancing this many legends is hard, and somehow the legends all feel fun to play still. I will say that I feel like the most recent legends abilities have felt kind of random and not really cohesive, but I think that their overall designs have been solid. I mean, I love playing Ash, even if I don't understand what an arc snare has to do with the rift teleport. I just hope that future legends don't have this weird lack of cohesion. Apex Legends has changed my life. All the friends I've made, all the videos, and a lot of the success that I've had has been thanks to this game. So obviously, I hold it near and dear to my heart. Recently, they finally followed me on Twitter, unlike some of you, <clears throat> and I just felt so happy that the game that has made such an impact in my life has straight up acknowledged my hard work. Essentially, this is me saying that I know that I'm biased as hell when coming into this re-review. This game still has plenty of issues. I mean, I still can't hear footsteps, but I want you all to know that I genuinely think that Apex Legends deserves this score I'm about to give it. Not because it's one of the most important games to me personally, but because it's genuinely a really good game. Thanks to its Titanfall roots, the movement is unmatched by no other game right now. The gunplay is still the best out of any shooter. Every single character is so unique and so fun. There's bound to be one or two or seven legends that you're going to fall in love with. It's hands down the best battle royale game ever made. Period. So I will be giving Apex Legends in 2022, my second ever, 10 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you later. You noob.
Apex Legends, I'm in heaven. Ooh, you had eight different legends in the beginning. No, 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 no. Apex Legends, I'm in heaven. Apex Legends. Three years later, don't want it to end.